Hello YouTube, this is Marco. Thanks so much for joining me for another video, another collection review. So let's roll the intro and jump straight into it. Alrighty, so this review is for Angie. Thanks so much, Ant, for submitting your collection for review. So taking a look at, I guess, from top to bottom, left to right, we're looking, I believe, at what is a 5513 Rolex Submariner, which I think is the epitome of what a Note 8 sub should be, kind of two-liner, beautiful example. In your case, I think it looks pretty damn minty from uh, the pictures that you've provided for me. Uh, just a wonderful watch, I think, right up there with the 14060 two-liner sub uh, with really what a Note 8 sub should be. He's got... A smooth bezel, a Jubilee bracelet, Wimbledon Datejust, which I think is a wonderful watch. He's got, of course, a 5227G from Paddock, which I think epitomizes kind of Paddock in a watch, right? It's kind of understated elegance. A beautiful example of a Calatrava, you know, kind of vintage styling, but with a modern case and built quality. He's got the 15300, which he actually bought before the huge price explosion. So good for you on that, man. You were ahead of the market. I think the 15300 is really the sweet spot. Uh, again, 39 millimeter size. Um, and compared to the 15202, I like the fact that it has a running seconds. I don't know what it is, but for me personally, I think just a two hand watch, it just feels a bit lifeless. It doesn't really feel like a mechanical watch, even though I know it is. Um, so I like to have a little liveliness on the dial. And I think the 15300 is really that sweet spot. He's got a Longines Classic Heritage, I believe, and that is the Hodinkee Limited Edition. He's got a two-tone root beer, which, again, I think nobody makes a GMT quite like Rolex. I think it's the best watch they make. And a root beer is a wonderful example. And last but certainly not least, he has a 38-millimeter Zenith El Primero, uh, which I think is one of, if not the very best, bang per buck values on chronographs on the market today. So wonderful collection, very diverse. Um, I think this is a great collection already, a lot of great foundational elements to it. Um, but I really think we could take this to the next level uh, with some of my recommendations. But before we dive into those, let's take a look at his situation. He said he liked to keep his collection uh, to six watches plus one on the wrist, which I feel definitely makes sense. I think having seven watches allows you to have enough diversity in your collection to really enjoy all of your watches, but not go you know, completely overboard, both from a financial perspective, but also from the, the perspective of, you know, you really just can't enjoy your watches once you get beyond that kind of threshold unless you're really swapping them multiple times a day, which I personally don't do. Um, he said he'd like to keep all watches under 40,000. Uh, and again, he bought the Royal Oak before the price explosion. Obviously that's worth more now today, um, which I feel is really, again, the sweet spot. I think you hit the nail on the head. I really should make a video about this, but you know, I tried a number of watches on while I was in London and I feel that that 20 to $50,000 range is really where you see real tangible differences in watches, right? We're talking about the movement, the movement finishing, the case, how they make the case, uh, the lugs, uh, of course, the dial, the complication, all the things that factor into the price of a watch. I think in that 20 to 50,000 range is really where you see tangible differences. And then beyond that is where you're looking for either a specific complication uh, from a specific brand, a specific kind of dial, you know, all those kind of things, again, which factor into price. But I think that twenty to 50000 is really where you get the real tangible differences and the great, the best value, in my opinion. I mean, he says he doesn't care for value retention and is a fan from most brands except for Breitling, Piaget, and Tag Heuer. And, you know, I'm kind of right there with you. I do think, though, in fairness, Breitling and Tag Heuer do make a number of watches that are worthy of people's consideration. Uh, but Piaget, you know, I, I really... I, I've never spent any time studying the brand. I couldn't really care less for them. You know, it's kind of a shame. I was thinking about recommending a Piaget Polo S to pair with the, the Royal Oak. That's a joke. But, you know, it's just – it's not a band that pers personally speaks to me. Um, and, yeah, it, it, I, I tend to agree. I would I would avoid it altogether. So, overall, again, hitting back to his collection, I think it's well-balanced. He's got all of his functions covered, his diver, his dress watch, his GMT, his chronograph. He has some kind of duplicates in the date dress and the launching, which I feel kind of perform a similar function. Um, so we'll get into kind of my recommendations in a second. He has obviously that kind of FU watch, the integrated bracelet, blue dial, Royal Oak, which I feel is just, you know, one of, if not the very best sports watch on the market today. So just a wonderful watch, wonderful collection. So where do we go from here? I think overall, my recommendation would be to get rid of two watches. And those are namely the date dress and the launching. And, the launching itself, I think you could definitely consider keeping. You know, it's more of a, an affordable watch, if you will. 
Um, not something that was super expensive in your collection. It is unique in that it's a Hodinkee limited edition. Um, but it's kind of like a sports casual watch, which I feel is kind of done by the Zenith El Primero. And I would choose the Zenith any day of the week over the launching. I think it's just a lot more interesting. Um, and it's kind of the same idea with the Datejust, right? It's kind of that sport casual watch where it's not sporty like the Royal Oak, but yet it's not dressy like the Paddock. It's kind of in that middle range, which, you know, you could definitely consider the sweet spot. Personally, for me, I feel it's a little unnecessary. So yeah, I would just consider liquidating that piece. So this would be your collection overall after those recommendations, five watches. I think from here, it's a very solid base, solid foundation. And um, you definitely can build off of that. So what, where, where would I go from here? Well, I'm looking, you have two Rolexes, which I feel is more than enough. You definitely don't need any additional Rolexes. I like the Zenith El Primero. Uh, because I think it's just a great kind of budget chronograph. I like the Royal Oak, obviously, and the Paddock. And I feel ultimately I would go in the direction of completing the Holy Trinity. I think it just makes sense. And the watch that I would recommend is the Vacheron Hysterix 1921. I think it would create a kind of perfect duo between that Paddock and uh, the VC in that one's in white gold, one's in rose gold, one's in automatic watch, one's a, a, obviously a manual wine watch. You know, one is a very classic watch. One is a little unorthodox, a little unique. And overall, you get to complete your trinity. I think you add a little more variety to your collection. You add metal variety. You add something that's a little unorthodox, a little more, you know, not the mainstream. And I think these on the secondary market, you could still pick up for somewhat decent value. So it would be a watch I would definitely consider adding to the collection. And I would definitely say it would be a great addition to yours. You complete the trinity. I think you add a little more diversity. Obviously, it takes your collection really to that kind of next level, in my opinion. Again, with something a little un unorthodox and off the beaten path. Now, up until yesterday, and actually, this was my review for you. Um, I didn't think you really needed anything else. This, these six pieces make for a great balance, great variety. It's a great collection overall. But yesterday, actually, on stream, you recommended a watch that I had no idea about until yesterday. And, you know, I got to give you credit. I think it would actually work perfectly in this collection. So, I would recommend actually getting rid of the Zenith and replacing it with another one. And the other one would be uh, this one right here. So it's the G381 Revival model. It's a yellow gold watch with a panda kind of style dial. Uh, just absolutely gorgeous. I think it looks beautiful. Uh, obviously, this, I believe, was a revival of a historic watch that Zenith made in the past. A 50-piece limited edition, although these aren't exactly flying off the shelves. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to pick these up, you know, for a bargain within the next couple of months to a couple of years, you know, uh, I think you could definitely, if you can snag one up at a good price, I would definitely add this to the collection. And I think also, again, it really adds a little more variety and takes your collection to that next level. Now we're talking about a watch that completes not only your metal Trinity, right? So you have the Holy Trinity and a metal Trinity, right? So you have the rose gold, the white gold, and the yellow gold. You have your Holy Trinity, you have your sports watches, your dress, your chronograph, your GMT, your diver, you know, you have every kind of base covered and it really takes your collection over the top, in my opinion. So I think when I look at this, I see a beautiful collection. I see a lot of diversity. I see, you know, metal diversity, uh, watch diversity. I see ultimately a collection that makes sense. I see a vision in the way that you built this and it's very purposeful and very unique as well. So this is my review. I think if you want to add a seventh watch, I would wait to see what comes out this year. I think if IWC re-releases the Ingenieur, um, I, I would consider adding that as another kind of Genta, Genta style sport or Genta sports watch. Uh, again, another watch with an integrated bracelet. It would make, again, another duo, uh, another great duo with your, your AP Royal Oak, another brand to add to the collection. So even more diversity to take your collection really to that next level and really take it over the top. But I think these six pieces right here are a wonderful collection. If of course, you decide to go this route, but I hope you enjoyed my review of your collection. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I'd love to get your feedback. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, guys, I'm kind of catching up on the collection reviews. So, you know, if you guys would like to submit your collection for review, by all means, feel free to do so uh, by email. I'd be happy to review your collection. I would like, of course, to get back to uh, some regularly scheduled videos, uh, maybe some opinion pieces and what have you. So I'll try to sprinkle them in during the week uh, with, with a mix of the collection reviews as well. So cheers, guys. Thanks so much for joining me again in the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. 
did I make the right choices or should and ultimately go in, a, in another direction? I'd love to hear your feedback. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next one.